Hey and welcome back to Toby's Video Skills with Toby. Today's video will focus on this little Raspberry Pi which we used yesterday and installed this relay board on it. But today we will go and replace it. That's correct. So we did an install yesterday and as you remember or if you maybe not remember but up there, wait a second, up there? I think it's up there. Up there is the video where you can see how we installed this relay board on the Raspberry Pi. I do have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and we are using Victron Venus OS 2.94. So when we did the install yesterday, we did the hardware install and the software configuration. In today's video, we'll focus on replacing the hardware with this little friend. We will install another um, relay board which has only I'm putting it here so you can see it which has only three relays but therefore as you can see here better we do have the pins here and then I, I call I don't know if it's all right we have to pass through pins up here as well which means we can still use the pins on the Raspberry Pi when we install it on top of the Raspberry Pi which is amazing and which will give us more opportunities I guess also using those pins still um, we do lose one relay is that bad? I don't know if it's bad or not. But uh, the products will be all linked in the description below in case uh, you want to know which products I was using. And here's it side by side. So the next step will be we'll take off this relay board. We'll install this relay board. This relay board. And then we'll check in the Raspberry Pi if it's still recognized as a relay board or as a relay. And if you can still trigger it. That's the goal of today's video. In a follow-up video, we will be testing the relays as well because we install it, we can trigger it. What else can we do? And what are the purpose of those relay boards since they are rated up to 10 amps, which is great. So let's start with uh, the installation. Great, that was uninstall. That will be the install, and we also got some installation hardware with it. Some spacer, some screws. I'll give it a try. First thing, let's prepare. Also kind of give us a few spares looks like next step will be we'll connect it check it out cool now we installed the hardware that was fairly easy luckily installation hardware was a little easier than last time but what I want to do next is checking oh nice so we can see here in the board already there is a LED a red one lighting up hope you can see everything here uh, it's still booting, so I'll wait for when it's booted. And as always, what we need, we need to know the IP address because we want to go into the browser and we want to connect via the console to the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, there it is, nice. Um, cool, since we left last time, that's the same relay overview, same configuration we did last time. Um, let me see, I'll just click something. All right. My assumption here is that we need to adjust what we've configured before. Before it was uh, for four slash for six relays configured and now we only have three relays so I'll have to check and double check what we need to configure here that it's responding accordingly on the board as well obviously okay cool my friends um, we had to adjust a little bit and I'll show you exactly what I did but it's very minor and that's great so 
as you remember, we had those four relays configured and we were using the script, which was plug and play from It's Me. Link in the description is also below. The script from It's Me. Um, and we did have the relay one. So basically relay, relay one, two, three, four, five, six. And out of the box, we only had this one working relay four. And I can explain you why now, and that's good. And I think it's easy also to understand. So and therefore, let me try try to get a good picture. I'm not sure if this is really good readable, but um, since we have three relays here, this board comes with information here on the side that we do have, I'm uh, not one of us certain you can see it, on the left side of this little table here of those jumpers, the left side. We do have relay one, two, and three. Then we have the jumper, and then we have the input output on the right side, and it's written there. It needs to be uh, for relay one, 26, or pin 26, for relay two, 20, and for relay three, 21. So that's what we need to configure, and that's exactly what I did. Now we'll get back, take a look inside of the script. I just did comment everything out except for here, those rows. Um, the comments are wrong, so I'll have to change that. But for relay one, we use twenty uh, pin twenty six. For relay two, we used pin twenty, and for relay three, we used twenty one. That is exactly and matches with the information, which is on the board. And now I'll show you what it does. So please pay attention on the screen. Right now, we only have a power on of the board. I hope you can see it. And now let me trigger relay one, two, and three. Relay one, turn it on, relay two, and relay three. Now I'm turning them off. And that's all. It is working. Oh, nice. So I think we can wrap it up. Um, the purpose of this video was just to replace the other board and see if we can just replace it easily with uh, so the old board how Chris Fix from YouTube says out with the old in with the new well might not apply but you might know the reference so here we have it relay 1 relay 2 relay 3 and also with the pin which uh, applies it and the cool thing about this board just to wrap it up sorry about that one but we have those pins available here which means we can now plug in for example, my fan, which is running with housing. Brings me to another topic, two other topics actually. Very important. Um, first off, I need a new housing. Same important. Very important though, um, as much as understood also from, from the comments and also from It's Me, from the board, um, whose idea I took here and just recorded. After every update, after every firmware update, it will delete or reset this file basically so that's something which i have to follow up with and double check that we can uh, put something in place to make it firmware proof so every time we have to firmware update it's not destroying all of our configurations but there's a solution already in place i just have to do a little more research and see what it means until then this is all for this video uh, i would like to see you subscribe like the video if you want to if you like the content if not please leave a comment i'm super happy to follow up with everyone who leaves a comment and see what what you think about it thanks for watching Cheers.